Welcome to the Sports Hangover. I'm Michael Benatar, joined alongside Sam Gaffan for our best bets for the divisional round. You, We missed last week, which was probably a bad thing because we both did really well gambling last week, and I don't know if we could redo the magic that we had last week so hopefully we can we could walk them through or we could walk them through our bets so they understand the mentality behind it now they can learn from it and, and so make some moves this week what, what was your mentality last week mine was go all in on a good team that was that was yeah, yours was yeah you took a clear favorite you took kansas city yes. in kansas city and like negative 28 degrees against a like terrible tua in miami in the cold yeah which yeah. i bet i bet on that game too but I also bet on Houston, which I really liked last week. Not so much this week. Mm-hmm. And I went even bigger on the Bucks uh, spread, which was like plus four. Three. Three, four, Three. somewhere around there. Three. Yeah, it's yeah. uh last week I felt like it was a little easier picking out winners. This week I'm I'm having a lot of trouble. So I'm gonna have to talk through it with you. Um, we can start right at the beginning. We could just go Texans, Ravens. This is the first game on Saturday. Ravens, Ravens are, are unstoppable. It's a clear one. Well, Ravens are a minus nine favorite at home, nine and a half, wherever you're getting the, the spot. I don't, I don't like the minus nine and a half, but they're going to win. <laughs> so you think they're going to win? No doubt. I think it's so clear it's going to win. Minus nine and a half is a tough pill. I wouldn't bet the Ravens at minus nine and a half, though. So right now, there's 82% of the money on the Texans spread and 65% percent on the money line so I, I just don't know I, I don't know it's a weird week like I would say take the nine points with Houston because it feels easy I don't want to tease 100%, it 100 percent because CJ will keep them in the game and keep it close nine and a half points is a lot but with the so this is like I saw a stat I'm sure you saw it too but there was somewhere where they were explaining uh any team that had a buy going into this week does not do as well throughout the rest of the playoffs like the against the spread i think is like minus 500 or something i i don't know where it was i had it somewhere i didn't write it down but um it, it's just a weird game and the ones that i do have as a favorite of more the ravens more than a touchdown minus seven and a half or higher lamar jackson is one and eight against the spread over the last three seasons and he's the worst of all 32 qbs yeah, he, he's got a bad track record as a favorite but yeah. Have you taken in consideration playoff first regular season? Because the playoffs are a different animal. And how many of those games were contributed during the playoffs? So the only game he did cover with a seven and a half point more favorite was the Houston Texans uh, in week one this season. So I, you can take it. Listen, last week I saw Ooh, so I many came. trends. There was trends for like, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. The one trend that I looked up when, we, when I was watching the game, no rookie QB has ever won the Super Bowl. Now, rookie QBs have won playoff games, but they've never won a Super Bowl, which is kind of kind of wild. I went back. No rookie has ever won a Super Bowl. So it does make me think like, yeah, bet the Ravens money line. You might be able to get rookies. This. Rookies also typically don't start their first year. And typically the ones that do were top picks for a bad team. Mm hmm. So that, that's why that doesn't exist. But CJ is not a normal quarterback. We've never seen a rookie quarterback play like this. He he's better than fifty percent of the starters, but probably more in the league as a so rookie. You, so you're you're leaning right now. You you like Ravens money line basically. Uh, yeah, that's an easy one. But I think if you're going spread, it's definitely Texans with with nine and a half. I would also maybe bet the over on this game. I don't know what the over is, but I do like some overs. I'm definitely uh, one of the games I'm taking over. I think I might put all my money on me and Sam are in a gambling contest. We're both the best at it right now. We're both up there. One and two uh, by a long shot. We're like yeah, way yeah. in the lead. So I don't know. I, I worry now. It's like, do we just cruise? Are you just going to cruise the rest of the way? Put in like the minimum amount gambling well, this well, week? I think, I think our minimum is up to basically a third of what we have. Yeah. Like it's, it, so I think it's it's gonna be hard to cruise. I don't I don't think it'll be that hard to cruise. We we have a nice cushion to mess around with some random bets, but I'll uh, maybe we I'll do. tweet you out. Could, our we, bet. Could, we could spread. We could we could take the minimum and spread it out. So you yeah. so you can't you limit you limit your downside, but you're limiting your upside. I, don't uh, know, I might I might take the Benatar approach. Just go heavy on one game. 
one it, clear, it, one clear it's game. a little better. It's just like one game. That's all you got to worry about. You don't have to worry Ravens, about like Ravens, Ravens money. Now. I'll put it all on Ravens money line. But the problem is you only, it's like minus three thirty, So you're not going to get a lot of money for it. Right. So it's, it's kind of, yeah. you, you want to get like better odds. So you maybe go like first touchdown with uh what's that rookie likely isn't likely the uh, rookie now. I say of, likely. Yeah. The tight end. Yeah. For Baltimore. Yeah. I think Mark Andrews is, is set to play. I, he, he looked like he, he broke his kneecap. How is he playing like a month later? I thought I read something that he was act, activated from IR and that's why. All right, let's go to the next game. Uh, 49ers are at home, minus nine and a half. They're playing the Packers. This is the late game. This is the five o'clock game for us. Money's evenly split both ways. I have no feel for this. I have no bets that it'll be placing on this game. I just don't know what's going to happen. I want the 49ers to win because. I have bets on them, but I just don't think this is a game I want to bet on. Looks like Packers are getting hot. 49ers took that week off. That does scare me with those stats that like most teams are not very well like off against the spread when they're coming off that bye. I don't know. You got any feels for it? Uh, very similar to the other game. I like Packers with the spread, but money line San Francisco. San Francisco is going to show up. They're a monster. As long as those key starters are in, which I haven't read anything that, you know, like Debo, Christian, like anyone's missing time, I'm going to yeah. miss this game. Trent, those are like the big uh, captains that really lead that team and the offense. If they're, if they're in, it's, it's clear money line. They're going to, they're going to win, but nine and a half is a lot. And Packers but, were, they looked pretty good last week. But do you think like, I'm always thinking, looking at this, it's like, okay, for average gambler, Sam, like somebody just looking at, let's call J dog an average gambler. He's pretty bad at it. A lot of mm, a lot of below players. average statistically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeremy's below average gambling. Sorry, you Jeremy. look at the you look at the teams and you see Packers getting nine and a half points. You immediately think, oh, I should take the spread, right? And I don't know. A lot of times with green, these games, take, take Green, take Green, take Bay, Green Bay. Yeah, spread. take the plus points. But I think in these divisional games, like I think the games are going to be close. I do think that taking an underdog in one of these division games, I don't know which one you want to take. But I would jump on an underdog, just money line, because you're going to get paid out a lot more. Like if you took the Bucks money line last week, how much was that paying you? Like three to one or something like that? I don't think it was that. It may have been. I don't, I don't know. I, I got scared. I was going to do money line. I took the spread. Don't be a pussy, Sam. You got to just bet it. I didn't know which Bucks were going to show up. And by the way, the Bucks yeah. that showed up were a Bucks that hadn't been there all year. They looked <laughs> like they looked like the Bucks that crushed Patrick Mahomes a couple of years ago. Yeah. Every single facet of that team was firing, minus receivers with some random drops. But other than that, I, I haven't seen that defense and pass rush all year. And well, let, let's talk firing. about the Bucks game. The The Bucks are a seven-point underdog or six-and-a-half-point underdog against the Lions at home in, in a dome, which I don't know if you saw the reporter ask about uh, how they're going to acclimate to the weather in a dome. And it's like, we're playing Gee. indoors. Uh, how she messed that up is really – we should ask J-Dog since he's like the TV guy, how, how do you, how does that happen? How does a reporter have a, it wasn't just like, what do you think about the weather? She had like a drawn yeah. out, like, yeah. you know, the weather has been contributing. It's going to yeah. be cold. We've seen this happen in other games. How do you, I don't know how you fuck that up. Well, it's indoors. The bucks are getting these points. All the money is on line. It's like, this is a game where you just take a long shot. You put a couple hundred dollars on the bucks money line for them to win this game. Now, I do have tickets for both not only the Bucks and the Lions to win the Super Bowl this year. So, I, I want both of these to go. Uh, I have tickets for just the Bucks and Lions remaining. And I think I have... No, that's it. The Texans I did. Is, e is it equal money? Do you have equal on each side? Uh, I have $100 on the Lions and only like $12 on the Bucks. But they both, <laughs> pay, they both pay out like $500. So, you clear... Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. This, this is a really tough one for me, especially because it's, I mean, it's the Bucks, so I'm so biased on taking them and thinking they're going to show up again like they did last week. But I don't know. I said it a couple weeks ago. Detroit is a really good team, and they're hot, and they're at home, which they always play well at. Mm -hmm. The Bucks have been pretty good against the run, and that's like that's what the Lions are without that run, that two-headed monster. They can't play. But I don't know. I just have a feeling the Bucks have been so hot and cold, and I'm worried they're going to come out cold after such a hot week. And Detroit has just been the last couple of weeks. They've been so consistent and so on. And typically, they play really well at home. I don't know. It just feels like it's Detroit. It, Detroit's here. It does seem, but like the the Lions game last week, they didn't score many. Did they score any points in the fourth quarter? 
Like it, it just seemed like they got hot, they got a few plays in, they scored points, and then kind of slowed down. So I I do think like if the Bucks can get up here early and get some points in and try to have the Lions fight back and score points, I think that could be a good spot for the Lions. But yeah, the Lions are playing great. The Bucks are playing good. I don't trust the Bucks as much. Like I don't know which Baker is going to show up. He always they, looks they've been hot and cold. That's that's the problem. Yeah. Like if the Bucks from last week show up, they will beat the Lions by two touchdowns. But the the Bucks have been so hot and cold. I mean. Week 18 against Carolina, they looked like they, they won, but it was like not yeah. what was it nine to zero or something. They looked like they looked like trash. Yeah, they played down to their their team. The, so this like, is the one game. This is the only thing I like all week. I'm taking the over on this game. I think the over right the the points are 48 and a half. I, I might just put all my money on the over and just hope this is a blowout. But yeah, I mean, I, I hope it's like a, a huge game, like 30 to 40 or something like that. Because I, I could see them both scoring a lot of points. God, that's tough. I mean, that means the Lions' run game is going to be all over, and that means the Bucks' D is going to be flaring, flailing. So, I don't know. I, I just I don't have a good feeling about this one. I just feel like it's Detroit's year. Tampa was so hot last year. Are you betting I'm on this I'm probably not going to bet this. I may just bet it just because I'm such a big Tampa fan. I just want to have money on it. But I don't feel good like okay. strategically about putting money on this game. Uh, and then the last game, Bills are at home, minus three or minus two and a half against the Chiefs. It is weird that they put this game late night in Buffalo where it's really cold, and I think it's just going to be just as cold this weekend. I know Kansas City just played in the cold, but I, I just don't know. Cold games are weird because it seems like weird things happen. Both these teams play in the cold. They're comfortable with it. I don't want to bet on this game either. I do think the Chiefs are a better team. I don't believe in the Bills, but... I just – I don't want to bet it. It's like a big game. I just I, can't bet. I love this game. Kansas City okay. money line all day. All they're day. Gonna, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna F up Buffalo. Buffalo, they looked really good last week, and I, yeah. I'm a big Josh fan. But they are not a complete team, and they are still injured. Oh. Patrick, you want to talk about like the stats? You're talking about how bad the sure, is. Yeah. Sure, look up, Look up Patrick's stats in the postseason. What are his stats? Tell me his stats. I'm like to look I don't know them. I, I just know they're immaculate. <laughs> I brought them up. I brought them up on an earlier pod, so we'll have to go back in the archives. Uh, he, he is when and when it gets cold out, Patrick turns it on, and they finally. It looked like last week they cured the receiver issues. Rashid, whatever. Did his name they? Was, I mean, Rashid. he still dropped a ton of passes. Rashid had a day, and they still get. They still got the win in the depth. Like it was super. It was, it was like it was, in the teens there or something. I thought it was like in the negatives. I thought it like felt like negative, negative something. So I think there's no issue playing in Buffalo in the cold. Now it is going to be a tough uh, environment because Buffalo sure. fans are going to be rowdy and wasted and going nuts. But this is Patrick Mahomes. This is the best the best player in the NFL. He will show up. Having him as a plus two and a half underdog, to me, it's an easy money line. I'm not going to go like ham like you did, like put all my money on it. But it'll probably be my it'll probably be my biggest bet. Yeah, this I, it's tough. Like. Since we're in a gambling contest, we're kind of basically winner takes all, winner takes the the main pot. I feel like every week I almost have to go all in and continue betting big. Cause it's like if you're in like the bottom two, you're never gonna get up to the top again. Like somebody has like 200 bucks remaining. You're not, I mean, you could, but you're gonna have to hit such a long shot bet to get up there. So I think this week it's like for me, one easy bet that just feels comfortable. It's like take, take Houston plus nine and a half, put all your money on it call it a day and the game should be close. But yeah, I, I just don't know what's going on with the chiefs and the bills. I think they're both like, they've always had wild games and I don't want to sweat through a wild game on this one. Like I would, maybe you take like the under in this game. Maybe I don't know what the under is right now, but if it's cold, are a lot of people scoring? Are they moving the ball? Are they trying to run it? it? seemed like last week they were just coming out throwing in the cold. So I don't know. I got no feel. This week is just a weird week, and I don't know. Last week, I was so confident. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's an easy bet. Like, it's snowing. It's cold. Tua can't handle it. Easy. I don't really understand the spread. Like, I'm looking. It's pretty clear. It's, I mean, most of the big houses are, like, two and a half, three. Plus yep. two and a half, three for Kansas City. I don't know why they're getting so many, like, why the Bills are getting so many points. Just because they're at home. The Chiefs are a better team. But like, that's clear. Just because Buffalo had a good week last week. I think it's also because Buffalo's at home, so you got to give them home field advantage. So that's yeah, like I'll give them two points, right? So if we say on a neutral field, Buffalo is minus one, right? I, I would say that would, that's kind of right. Like you got one each I way. Think neutral neutral field, I would give minus one to Kansas City. 
if I was if I, if I was Vegas. Well, then you got to bet him this week. It looks like you got to. You think, you you think Buffalo is a like? So we're taking the home field advantage aside. You think yeah. Buffalo is a better team than Kansas City? No, I don't think Buffalo is a better team, but I just think they're in their element. They're at home. They're getting hot. The Chiefs are having a lot of trouble with their their receivers. No one's catching. Well, even Kelsey can't even catch a ball, and that worries me a lot when these big games. And you can kind of see it too with like the Ravens. Like I feel like Lamar's always throwing the ball, and people are dropping the balls. If you're dropping balls, you're not going to win the game. I don't know. I so like to check those. I, did, I didn't watch. I didn't watch a lot of that game last week, but I'm pretty sure. What Houston Patty's or still through for you no know, the Kansas City game? Yeah, but I think uh, Rice. Let, let's say I feel like the stat was like I'm pretty sure he he had he a got day. fifteen. He got like fifteen looks and caught maybe like seven or eight of them. And if you're catching fifty percent of your throws, I think well, that really matters. You you want to be up high, like, right? How many how many of those throws were catchable? Sam, I don't know how many were catchable. <laughs> like, if we're gonna dig into details, but I just all I would say is this game scares me the most because it is evenly split, and you're gonna see money on both sides, right? That's what you're seeing right now. It's like evenly split, fifty-two with the fifty-four percent money in bets. Um, this is a game where you take the props. You take like Travis Kelsey anytime touchdown or Rashid Rice anytime touchdown. Like you take those anytime touchdowns. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm uh, hesitant this week on a lot of these bets for sure. So, we'll see. Well, why don't we? Uh, we have the Smitter bets Friday. You send me your bets. I'll tweet it out on our Twitter account, or maybe put up Instagram posts of our bets, and we'll keep track. And we're we're keeping track for the playoffs, right? We have our money. Me and you are both up right now. You have like fifteen hundred, and I have nineteen hundred, seventeen hundred, and we'll just keep track. We'll see who's the better uh, better at the end of the season. Hopefully, one of us wins Please. it. We will see. We will see, Sam. All right. Good show, Sam. Uh, we'll be back next week. Maybe we'll have J Dog come on and, and throw around some of his bet ideas. He lost all his bets last week. Every single bet he put in, he lost. He I didn't I didn't like his bets last week. He, he can't be too crazy. Sometimes sometimes you want to hit those long like you I hate it now when you're seeing on Instagram somebody put together this parlay for like four dollars and they win like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Those don't happen to normal people. Like you could put it together, but it could take you 10 years to hit one of those. You're never like going to hit crazy part, I'm yeah. not, I'm not a fan. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Good, good job, Sam. Check out the sports hangover.com. Go subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com backslash the sports hangover. We're on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok, A lot of comments. I saw a comment from you, Sam, really calling us out for the, for two. Uh, well, it, it, it was, it was not TikTok Cause I do not have TikTok. And I refuse to go on it. So it was on Instagram. It was on Instagram. You don't like my Tua take. I think it was misinformed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> read, right. Go and go and go and watch the clip and read the comment. Yeah. And yeah. Make, give your own comment. See what you feel. Yeah. Please, please leave a comment. All right, Tim. Good job. See you.